major banknote dealers here in Valkenburg at the Paper Money Fair is representative of Spink of London. Barnaby, you're here in Valkenburg. Why do you come to this show? I have no idea. <laughs> I've been here, I think I have been every single banknote show here in Maastricht and Valkenburg, except one, due to ill health once. I've been to every single show. So I think it's an institution. I sort of uh, feel I have to come. I'd miss it if I didn't. It's a great show. What about the people in the town? Well, Valkenburg is great, but I remember the days when it was in Maastricht, which is a truly lovely medieval city. Absolutely fantastic place. But Valkenburg is much more suited because the banknote business has got so much bigger. Maastricht was great when you had 20 tables and everybody it was a different kind of business. Now it's, it's, it's a global business now, so we need a bigger place. And Valkenburg's got everything you could possibly want, hotels, restaurants. It's great. Good fun. You've been with Spink for quite a few years. What have you seen in terms of the evolution of banknote? Oh, in, in enormous difference. I've been at Spink's 43 years, um, and I think when we started banknotes, banknotes were the Mickey Mouse hobby. Coins were what you did, and there were classical coin experts who thought, what are banknotes? They're just not worth bothering with. And we were allowed to put 10 banknotes at the end of a coin lot a coin auction one day, they rushed through them at the end because really we didn't want really bothering with that kind of stuff. Now I think our turnover is bigger than the coin department. So, you know, what's changed? Banknotes has become very, very popular. It's a great market. If you think the stamp market is vast, there are tens of millions of collectors. Stamps are tiny, they're not well printed. Banknotes are much bigger, much more colorful, and they're beautifully printed because they have to be to stop forgers, etc. What's not to like? And I think it's sort of snowballed over the years. And now you've got a big, healthy hobby. And it's a collector's hobby. It's not an investment hobby. Stamps and coins get investment money. They go up, they go down, like commodities. Banknotes are bought by collectors. If you came in to me and said, I've got half a million pounds, get me the finest banknotes, I can't spend your money. Join the queue, basically, because there are enough collectors out there. So it's, it's grown out of all recognition. It's a great, great hobby. Our problem is we can't find the banknotes. And you need to get more younger people in. That's probably going to be the big challenge of the future because you start collecting when you're young because you write letters, you cut off stamps off envelopes. Every kid has done that. You get change from holidays and you chuck them in a drawer. So that's how you start. It doesn't happen anymore. They're all on the internet writing emails, this and that. Collectors have to be encouraged, and I think that's the big job now for our business is to pull the young people into the business because we're all we're all dinosaurs now, still doing this thing. We need young blood, but be that as it may, the banknote business is is great. It's a good business. And you've recently had some landmark sales and some upcoming ones. Can you share some of the highlights? Yeah, we've um, we've just had a big sale in Hong Kong, which was very successful. I mean, the Hong Kong market is different. They are enthusiastic, doesn't really cut it, cut, cut it mustard. But the Chinese market is very, very strong and that's a comparatively new market. Hong Kong is very good right now and the collectors are fanatical. So that was very successful, great fun to do. Over here we have a London auction next week and we probably have one of the nicest notes I've had for a, a many, many years. Um, a couple of gentlemen came in with a little old envelope saying, is this any good? I love that. And inside was the straight settlements, $10 of 1931. There are, I think, five dates for the $10. Uh, it's always 1935, never any other date. This is 31, the rarest note, serial number A over 1, number 1, which is unbelievable, because I thought that would be in the King's collection or the Queen's collection. It's the first of its type, first portrait note, Normally, or as far as I know, because of course they're never going to tell you anything, the Queen or the King have the first of anything. And attached with the note was a letter addressed to the governor by his Christian name, Cecil. Dear Cecil, we thought you would like this note as a memento of your great triumph. So, I mean, it's a lovely piece of history, because then it was a $10 note. That's, that's all. And probably up to about the last, maybe 30 years ago, it was a $10 note plus a premium. Now. It's a fantastic banknote. So I have no idea what it's going to sell for. I know people are in, I've just been to Singapore and pushing the note at people. I think it's going to go for quite a lot of money. But I'm a pessimist, so I'm not going to say anything because I'll jinx it. It's a great note. 